Anyway. <laughs> um, I mean, can I talk to the guy, you know? Will he answer the buzzer? No answer. Oh, all right. Nothing changed. Okay, so I need to get back to Charlie. Tell him that basically I am a piece, piece of shit that's using him. Um, because that's what's happening, really. How else do you call it? Because, uh, you know, he let her in. I don't know why. She just... Oh, because she said something about Reza. But why? I still don't understand. Why would he open? He, sh he should... He shouldn't care about it at all. Like, he just... He, he, sh he should have said, Lady, I don't know the guy. Bye. But I guess Charlie was always a good person. I remember when he... Oh my god, I had such a crush on him when I was playing The Longest Journey. And he was just a, just a bunch of pixels almost. Yeah. Hi, it's Zoe Castillo again. May I come in? Of course. Of course. Again, why is he answering the buzzer and not the receptionist? That's so strange. Hi, can I... Can I invite a hobo guy here? Hey, you're back. Surprised? You look like you could take care of yourself, so no. Really? Not really. Did you find your friend Jericho? His name's Reza. And uh, no, not yet. But I have a lead. Good, I hope you find him. He seemed like a nice guy. I hate that she's constantly blowing Reza's cover. Like, there's a reason why he didn't tell these people his real name. Like, Helena Chang knew him as Jericho. Charlie knew him as Jericho because, you know, that, that's, that's why code names are for. If you want to hide your identity so you won't get tracked or caught or anything. Wait, was that bartender there the last time? <laughs> anyway, um... Have you heard? You haven't from heard Reza. from Reza again, have you? Sorry, girl. If he calls, I'll let you know. How long ago did you say you lived at the border house? Ten years. Why? It must have changed yeah. a lot. It was a horrible place. There was one room that looked okay, but the rest of it, ooh, just horrible. Ten years is a long time, girl. The world can change completely in a decade. Thank you, Charlie. For what? Listen, feel free to hang out here for as long as you want. Maybe your friend will stop by again. By the way, can I invite some other friends here? Um, Charlie seems like a really nice yeah, guy. Yeah, I have no idea how he's in charge of a place like this. Yeah? Um, really? Okay. I thought I would have to ask him about getting this guy in here. Toilet. The bartender. I don't think she was here the last time. We're not open yet. If you want anything, you'll have to talk to Charlie over there. Can I order anything? <laughs> okay, so I wasn't supposed to talk to Charlie about inviting a guy. So what am I supposed to do? I mean, let's try. Let's try. Um, messages. Nothing. Um, calling Liv? Zoe? Hi, Liv. Did you find Reza? No, but I found something that belongs to him. His lighter. And there was blood on it. Sweetie, that doesn't mean a thing. Listen, I know he's alive. He accessed the wire for a brief moment last night. Just a burst of data. Really? Did you see what it was? Nope. It was encrypted to an anonymous recipient, but it was there, a sign of life, so I'm sure he's okay. Have you gotten any further with his notepad? Yes and no. I've got all the data out, and now I need to piece it all together in a coherent fashion. I've got bits and pieces. There's lots of stuff about the static, but nothing you wouldn't be able to find on the wire. Looks like he was doing research into that. That makes sense. The static would be the kind of story Reza would be interested in. I've got a lead myself. What is it? A guy. He said he'll help me find Reza. I'm meeting him tonight at the Fringe. All right. Call me as soon as you know more, okay? I'll get back to the notepad. I will. Thanks, Liv. Bye. 
I mean, this all sounds so stupid, sorry, but... <sighs> to summarize, she... Wait, maybe now I have to talk to Charlie after speaking with Liv, I guess. Okay, either way, this sound, this yeah. seems Hi, so stupid Sorry. because, again, there's this shady house and there's this shady guy in that house and her boyfriend went to that house and he disappeared. She found a trace of him, his lighter, but it was covered in blood and there was all, all around quite a lot of blood. And she bumped into this weird looking guy that is, I don't know, guarding the place. And she made a deal with him to help her find her boyfriend. I mean, sorry, but it sounds like a red riding hood going to the wolf. Sorry, have you seen my gram grandma? Like, girl, girl, that's so stupid. Oh my God. Can I talk to you now? Yeah. Okay, mm. all right, all right, I know. Sorry for wasting your time. <sighs> anyway, okay, so I need to do something else in here. But what, what am I supposed to do? M wait, maybe my notepad? Mm, later tonight at French. I guess I'll just go there and wait for him. I need to speak with Charlie too. The only thing in that wardrobe was the... Oh, a picture! And the two girls. I don't see how that was anything to do with Reza or the scary girl. Okay, I will... Okay, now I know. I am supposed to show Charlie the picture. So, sorry for going yeah. here and back Hi, again. Charlie. It's Zoe. Come on I mean, Charlie should just smack me on the head for just wasting his time. And constantly. Oh, so still, why is he answering the buzzer? Uh, picture. Could you tell me anything about this picture? That's you, isn't it? Jesus Christ, where did you find this? At the hotel, room 201. I found it in the closet and I figured you'd know. I mean, that is you, right? Ten years and a lifetime ago. Yeah. I can't believe that Graf would still be in April's old room after all this time. April? April Ryan. The girl in the middle. 201. That was her room ten years ago. Did... Did you say April Ryan? Yeah. Why? That name sounds very familiar. You probably got her mixed up with someone else. April vanished back in 09, just days before the collapse. We spent a long time searching for her before we... before I gave up. Emma, on the other hand, she never lost faith. She still thinks April's alive and out there somewhere. Emma's the other girl in the picture. Yeah, they were the two best friends I've ever had. But I haven't heard from Emma in years, and, and April... Let's just say that I don't share Emma's faith in miracles. How did April disappear? Look, I'm not comfortable talking about this. It's private stuff. Um, I don't have time to be diplomatic. I mean, he's he's letting a lot slide with with Zoe. Um, a more diplomatic approach. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I need to know, Charlie. I think there may be a connection between April Ryan and whatever Reza was investigating. What? Are you serious? Maybe. This is gonna sound crazy. I can't even believe I'm telling you this, but... I've heard the name April Ryan recently. I've been seeing things. On screens. Back in Casablanca, at, at the hotel. Strange, creepy things. At first, I figured it had something to do with the static. That might still be the case, but I think there's more to it than that. There's this snowy landscape, a strange black house, a girl... I know it sounds completely insane, but the girl... She speaks to me, directly to me, through the screen. Find her, save her. At first that was all she said, and then... Find April Ryan. Find April, save April. When I was inside that place, the hotel, I saw the girl again. She pointed the way to April's room, to the closet where I found the picture. Jesus. If you're right, if this isn't some kind of sick joke, I need to contact Emma. 
She still believes April was telling the truth. The truth? About what? Can you stick around, Zoe? I'm sure Emma will hop on the first vac tracks or scramjet out of Europolis, and she'll want to hear this from you. Once she gets here, we'll tell you the whole story. I promise. Charlie, the April Ryan I've heard of might not be your April. I don't want you to get your hopes up. April disappeared under some very strange circumstances, Zoe. If there's even a tiny chance that this has anything to do with her, we need to pursue it. Okay. I have to wait here for this guy to contact me anyway. Marcus. I met him at the hotel. Marcus? This is starting to sound like a damn family reunion. Marcus was a friend of ours back in the old days, until he got into Amethyst in a big way. Haven't seen him in years either, but I heard he got a job at the, uh, the hotel. Yeah. He's some kind of caretaker. And you're right. It's not a hotel. I saw something while I was there. They're testing some kind of device that hooks up to your head. I've seen it once before. It's probably what brought Reza to Newport. Anyway, Marcus said he'd help me find out what happened to Reza, for a price. I told him to meet me here later. I hope that's okay. No problem. This is the safest place in Newport. Nothing gets in or out without me knowing about it. I'll make sure his name's put on the guest list. I'm gonna go call Emma. And then I need to take care of some business, but you can just hang out here. I'll have the kitchen make you something to eat. That would be nice. I'm starving. I haven't eaten since the train. You come to the right place. Our sashimi's the best in town. Find yourself a table and I'll have someone take your order. Thank you. Wait, Charlie? Yeah? You really think Rez is okay? He's an investigative reporter, isn't he? Jericho's famous. I'm sure he's been in worse scrapes. Don't worry, he'll be okay. Just a quick note. I have no idea who this Marcus guy is. I mean, at first when I when I heard the name Marcus, I thought, I think it's a character from The Longest Journey, but I don't remember who that is. I remember the uh, other person staying at the border house was Zach, Zach the asshole. And I remember Emma, I remember Charlie. I thought the four of them stayed at the border house, but I have no idea who is this Marcus guy. Maybe he was working with them at the fringe. I don't remember. But then, oh my God. So I, I found it pretty funny that it was so easy for Zoe to convince Charlie that there might be something. She said that I'm seeing things, well, it might be static, and I heard April's name, and she pointed me to the closet. I would say, girl, you're crazy. I mean, I would just send her on away, and I would, and if I was in Charlie's boots, I would say, like, get out, I, I don't want to hear any of this anymore. But he at the at the start of this conversation regarding April, he sounded like he was at peace with what happened. He said, "Well, she vanished. She probably, I think, I would suspect that he thinks that she probably died." He said that I don't believe in miracles. And then Zoe goes on and says, "You know, it it was kind of a miracle because I had this vision that April is still alive and I'm supposed to save her." I would just say, "You know what? No, just leave me. I I'm at peace with this." This is, okay, okay, I think this is just a bit weak writing in this game. Because th some of those characters seem unrealistic to me. I can say that, oh, okay, maybe, maybe Charlie is such a huge and generous and kind person that he will help anybody. I mean, he seemed like that in the first game, but here, guy... Guys, he's an owner of a nightclub. He's probably shaken by the mafia every second day. Like, seriously, and this guy with a heart of gold would be managing a nightclub. I mean, it's not the kind of a nightclub that has strippers and, and all that, but it's still like, you know, a party place. People come here to probably drink a lot, although I don't know, it looks a bit like a sushi place or whatever. But let's get back to the game. Uh, 
I really like the music in this game. Oh my god, the models are so bad. They look a bit like they were taken from the first game. Look at those guys in the front here. The ladies look decent, but those guys look horrible. And they are all one and the same model, I guess. This guy here in the front and the guy in, with the glasses over there. You can see that they spent much more time with the ladies than they did with the guys. <laughs> oh, and there's Emma and she still Emma has the same red dress. I know it's not much, and I know it may not even be your April, Ryan, but... It is. It has to be. I don't believe in coincidences, and this would be one enormous coincidence. Well, she could be trying to get in touch with us, Charlie. Maybe she needs our help. Maybe... Don't get your hopes up, Emma. We don't know anything yet. I'm sorry to ask, but... Charlie, you promised you'd tell me what happened to April. Yeah. Yeah, I did. She disappeared under some very strange circumstances. The day she vanished, corporates were after her. I still don't know why. They stormed the house and... Emma got shot. She almost didn't make it. As for April, she made it out. And that was the last we heard from her. But we know she got away. She was identified on security cameras uptown, and we found out later that she had boarded a shuttle to one of the orbiting stations. That's where the cookie crumb trail ends, however. Right after that, the collapse happened and everything changed. When things returned to normal, we were too busy putting our own lives back together. And by the time we started looking for her again... April was gone. Vanished. If it hadn't been for the things she'd told us, I would have simply believed that she was another victim of the collapse. What things? This is where it gets complicated. She spoke about another world, a sort of parallel magical dimension. We didn't believe... You didn't believe her, Charlie. I never doubted her. Fine. I didn't believe her. I'm still not sure I do, despite the things I saw during the collapse. Wait, April told you that she'd seen another dimension? Not seen. Been to. A place called Arcadia. There was this man. Cortez, a real weirdo. He told April that she had some kind of talent, power, to travel between worlds, and that she was needed. According to what April told us, there are two worlds. This one, and the other one. Arcadia. Well, and there's winter, and there's also the Guardian's dimension, and there's a, a story time, so I would say there are more than two. A world of magic. They exist in parallel, in balance with each other. I never had reason to doubt anything April said before, but even I was skeptical. So after I got out of the hospital, I started digging, and the things she told us... She's not the only one, Zoe. There are others who've traveled and seen Arcadia. It's real. Look, we don't know that. All we know is that some dangerous idiot put ideas into her head and... I know, Charlie. Have some faith, okay? I know. I can feel it. I've done a lot of research. When you have enough money, even the best-kept secrets are revealed to you. I'm sorry, Emma, but it does sound a bit... Crazy? Delusional? You don't think I've thought the same thing myself? How old were you when the collapse happened, Zoe? Nine? Ten? Ten. And do you remember anything about it? Not really. We were living in London at the time, and our subsection was shut down for several days. My dad, he wanted to protect me. I didn't see much. Most people don't remember, or they pretend to have forgotten. Those of us who saw it, you don't forget something like that. But there were things happening even before the collapse. Strange things, like... Like dreams leaking through into the waking world. Looking back, everything I've seen, read, what people have told me, people who had no reason to lie to me, I know she was telling the truth, and I believe she's still there. In Arcadia. Okay. Okay, so let's say you're right. The messages I've been getting. You think that winter place is the parallel world April talked about? Arcadia. From what I know, it doesn't sound like Arcadia, but who knows? The question is, who is the little girl, and why is she trying to contact you? After all, you didn't know April Ryan. Her name meant nothing to you until today. Chance brought you here, and if you hadn't found the picture and showed it to Charlie, you would never have recognized April's name. It seems improbable, I know, but Reza is the link. The story he's working on must have something to do with all of this. It's the only explanation I can think of. 
Your friend, the journalist, you still don't know where he is? No, but with any luck I might find out later tonight. Actually, Charlie, is there somewhere private where I can make a call? Maybe Reza's tried to contact me. I'm going to try his mobile again and check in with my friend Olivia back in Casablanca in case she's heard from him. Sure. You can use one of the private lounges upstairs. The last one on your left is empty. Thanks. I'll be right back. So, Charlie, what about this, this security of yours? I mean, what if I try calling Lyft now? It's too oh, noisy right. here. I should use one of the VIP rooms upstairs, like Charlie suggested. I mean, I would have used the toilet. It's the safest place. But again, to be honest, now this story is pissing me off even more. Now that I know the resolution of... of uh, chapters seriously because what what's the point of this whole April arc seriously what's the point hi this is Reza I'm either busy or I'm sleeping either way let me know what's up and I'll call you right back thanks hi it's me again I'm in I met Charlie, and I followed your tracks to the hotel. I found your lighter, and there was blood everywhere. I hope everything's okay, Reza. Please call me if you... when you get this message. I'm not about to give up on you, but I need to know that you're not... I need to know that you're okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, you got yourself a VIP booth? Marcus, I was just about to... Convenient, because I brought some friends along and they'd love to say hello in private. Yeah, Charlie, so about that security. <laughs> I mean, Marcus was on the list, so I guess that's okay. But I bet Charlie should have some, some kind of surveillance or anything. Anything. 